What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your $1,400 third stimulus check update, fourth stimulus check update, and related news. We got lots to go over today on the payment dates for the third stimulus checks, direct deposits, and paper checks. We're also getting a lot of questions about the tax refunds 2021 from the IRS tax refunds for 2021. And we're going to go over uh, some latest details on that. If you're waiting on a tax returns, the IRS says that there is a big delay on tax returns and stimulus checks as they're trying to get both of these out at the same time during a pandemic. I'm going to give you all the latest news and details in this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on updates on the third stimulus check and the upcoming rounds of stimulus in the future. Don't forget to hit the like button and let's jump right in. Here is the IRS Commissioner Charles Reddig on the IRS delays and backlog for tax refunds 2021, as well as stimulus check delays as they're working on both of this at the same time. Turning to the 2021 tax filing season, I'm pleased to report a successful opening of the filing season on, fe on Friday, February 12th. Over that first weekend, we received 55 million submissions which includes federal individual returns as well as state returns that we are called upon to process as well as returns filed by businesses. At the peak of, of that weekend, we were receiving 335 submissions per second. The filing season continues to go smoothly in terms of tax return processing and the operation of our IT systems. Through March 12th, the IRS has received more than 66 million individual federal tax returns issued more than 42 million refunds, totaling more than $126 billion. We opened the filing season slightly later than in previous years to give us time to do additional programming and testing of our systems following the December 27 enactment of tax law changes that provided for the second round of EIPs and other significant benefits. Importantly, the later start to the filing season did not add any delays to refunds on returns claiming the EITC and the additional child tax credit. By law, the IRS cannot issue these refunds before February 15. This filing season, the IRS released refunds for EITC and ACTC returns on February 16 and February 18. Those refunds were promptly available in taxpayer bank accounts if they chose direct deposit and there were no other issues with their return. During the filing season, we realize how important it is for taxpayers who have questions to be able to reach us by phone, and we are working hard to improve our phone level of service. We faced and continue to face enormous challenges. On occasion, we did not get it right, but we should have, and we accept that responsibility, and I accept that responsibility. There was no way for anyone, the IRS, anyone in the government, anyone in the private sector, to, to predict the level, depth, and, and spread of the pandemic. When we were submitting, submitting our congressional budget justification level of service, which applied to this year, but is submitted effectively two years in advance, the impact of the pandemic, that the pandemic would have on our call volume, our filing season, and our hiring was a complete unknown. That budget, which is our level of service, which is essentially for most people think of the volume of telephone calls we are able to answer um, was determined before there was a pandemic, before there was an EIP-1, before there was an EIP-2, before there was an EIP-3, and before all the other challenges that the IRS proudly accepts and assumes and, and proudly assumes the responsibility to handle. We are still working through the impacts of COVID-19, which created staffing shortages and closures at the same time. We have been experiencing higher than expected call demand for the reasons I previously indicated with an increase in call handling time. Our employees are spending an additional three or four minutes per telephone call received, which is caused, we believe, by the greater call complexity due to the economic impact payments and other recent tax changes. However, I and other leaders of the Internal Revenue Service have encouraged our employees to spend that additional time. With respect to unemployment insurance benefits, we, are, we believe that we will be able to um, monitor and we will be able to announce that individuals will not have to file amended returns to take the exclusion for the $10,200 per person. We hope to be able to announce that in the near future. 
IRS employees worked since last March to, to perform for the people in this country. In total, between EIP-1, EIP-2, EIP-3, and refunds to individuals during the pandemic, when we shut down, we switched to a virtual environment. We brought our people back on site. IRS and Treasury employees have delivered approximately $980 billion to individuals during the pandemic. We're very proud of that fact. We're honored to have the opportunity to serve the people of this country. If called upon to again, we will again step in and meet those challenges. And I will say that we will do so proudly. Wow. So a lot of different information there from the IRS about stimulus checks and tax refunds. The IRS commissioner says he hopes to clear the tax refund backlogs for tax refunds 2021 by summer. This means that some people will be waiting several months for their tax refunds. It really just depends on uh, which batch you get your refund in, if you're in one of the first batches or the later batches. This is similar to uh, IRS stimulus checks, as the stimulus checks are going out in batches. And, well, if you're lucky, you get done in one of the first two batches. If you're not, you get done in one of the later batches. As always, paper checks are always slower and always take a lot longer than direct deposits. So if you haven't filed your 2020 tax returns now here in 2021, you definitely should consider getting them done in direct deposit, which puts the money directly into your bank account. You don't have to wait on a paper check to be made and then mailed to you and then possibly lost in the mail, sent to the wrong address if you moved or any of those problems, having somebody take it. Uh, yeah, direct deposit, it's much, much easier. The only thing you got to keep in mind is that you can't be changing bank accounts all the time because then they'll try to send it to an old bank account. It'll bounce back, and then they'll have to send you a paper check anyways. Democrats have already vowed to go bold on the next stimulus package, the fourth stimulus package that we're calling it, known as the Build Back Better package, which will focus on infrastructure, but will have multiple different rounds of stimulus in there. Democrats are already saying they're probably going to have to pass this bill without Republican support again and pass it through the reconciliation process again. As you can see here, Democrats are warning they won't tolerate GOP, known as the Grand Old Party or Republican, stonewalling as they try to make good on their pledge to enact a bold agenda and avoid Obama-era missteps. Fresh off a big win off coronavirus relief from the third stimulus check package, Democrats are facing intense pressure not to water down their legislative priorities after years of a backed-up wish list during the Trump era and a decade since the party has had a unified government and it could use to muscle through sweeping reforms, quote, we will try to get them to work with us, but if not, we will put our heads together and we will figure out how to go said Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. House Democratic Caucus Chairman Hakeem Jeffries from New York was more blunt, calling Republican leadership divorced from reality for opposing policies that are popular even among Republicans outside the Beltway. Quote, our standard for bipartisanship can no longer be what happens here in the Capitol because we know that the strategies of my colleagues legislatively is not to try to find common ground. It's obstruction and mischaracterization. They ran this playbook during the Obama administration also, and they are running the same playbook again. Quote, we will not let them get away with it. Democratic Representative John Yarmouth from Kentucky says, we're going to keep putting stuff over there because Schumer's going to keep putting it on the floor and make the Republicans cast bad votes, basically putting them on the record that they're voting no against support for the American people and businesses. Quote, I think it's significant holding out and not getting it. Or, you know, holding out and having Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell or then House Majority Leader Eric Cantor at the same time say, hey, look, guys, we're not going along with any of this. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer says that the first quarter of 2021 was, quote, a volatile, sad, dangerous period in Congress's history. So basically, Democrats are saying they're going to continue to pass the upcoming stimulus package and other stimulus provisions, possibly the $10,000 of student loan forgiveness for everybody. As we already seen, President Biden 
already kick off the next round of stimulus as he has already canceled $1 billion in student loan forgiveness. President Biden already did this a few days ago. This is already done. This is really just the starting point on the next round of stimulus, what we're calling the fourth round of stimulus. And we're expecting a lot more student loan forgiveness in the near future. They have already put a provision in the third stimulus package that's already passed that says that any student loans that are forgiven will not even have that money count as taxable income. Without that law, it would would have been counted as taxable income. Now you won't even have to pay taxes on the money that is forgiven. We're expecting a lot more student loan forgiveness in the near future of at least $10,000 per person for anybody that has student loans. This also opens up the possibility of getting other types of debt forgiven now that they're doing this for student loans. Many years ago, people thought student loan debt forgiveness was a complete fairy tale and it would never happen. It's literally happening now. And a lot of people are questioning, well, what if you don't have student loans? Could you forgive medical debt forgiveness? Could you forgive credit card debt forgiveness? Could you forgive mortgage debt forgiveness? All these things are kind of now possibilities on the horizon now that they're doing $10,000 or they're going to be doing $10,000 of student loan debt forgiveness. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, AOC, and Elizabeth Warren are pushing President Biden to do more than $10,000 of student loan forgiveness. They're actually pushing him to do $50,000 of student loan debt forgiveness. And they say that the president can simply do this through a presidential executive order. He doesn't even need to go through Congress to get a bill passed to do this. Another thing that the Democrats are pushing for is to get rid of the filibuster. The filibuster is the rule in the Senate that says you need 60 votes to pass a normal bill. Of course, the Democrats are already saying they're going to pass the next stimulus package with the reconciliation card and the reconciliation process, which means you only need 50 to 51 votes in the Senate to pass the bill. That is how they pass the third stimulus check package because they only got 50 votes, although that was a simple majority. Um, one Republican didn't vote, so it was a 50 to 49 vote. If the other Republican would have voted, there would have been 50 Democrats that all said yes. All 50 Republicans, or in this case, 49 Republicans, voted no on the third stimulus check package. If that last Republican would have voted, he went to a funeral, it would have been a 50-50 tie, 50 Democrats yes, 50 Republicans no, and then the tiebreaker vote would have went to the vice president, who is Kamala Harris, who would have passed it with her yes vote. Either way, it passed through the reconciliation process. But Democrats want to get rid of the filibuster, the rule that requires 60 votes to pass any bills, stimulus bills, stimulus checks, student loan forgiveness, Social Security raises, but all bills. Also, bills on immigration, bills on tax raises, bills on anything. And if they do this, they won't need 60 votes in the Senate from here on out. This is for future Congresses, too, that could be controlled by the Republican Party in the Senate. Remember, the Republicans only need one vote in the Senate to basically take control, and that could happen in less than two years. But right now, the Democrats are trying to get rid of the filibuster, and it's probably something we'll see in the near future. If they do that, they can pass bills in the House and the Senate and send it to the presidency that are all Democratic and simply pass all these on their own without a single vote from a, any Republican anywhere. Former President Donald Trump chimed in on this and says that ending the filibuster would be, quote, catastrophic for the Republican Party if Democrats are able to do this. As you can see here, former President Donald Trump is warning Republicans that any effort to abolish the Senate filibuster would cause irreparable damage to the Republican Party. During an interview on the podcast, The Truth with Lisa Booth, Trump discussed Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and his attempts to fight off talk from progressives to eliminate the longstanding filibuster rule. He says, quote, look, Mitch McConnell is hanging on by a thread right now with respect to the filibuster. And if they get the filler, he's hanging on Joe Manchin, Democratic senator, who always goes with the Democrats. Joe talks, but he ends up going with the Democrats, just like he did with the third stimulus check package. He ended up voting with the Democrats when all was said and done. Now, there's another great senator from the state of Arizona. Kristen or Kirsten Cinema. Mitch McConnell is hanging on by a thread, and if they get rid of the filibuster, if they knock it out, it will be catastrophic for the Republican Party. 
Mitch McConnell said yesterday, let me say this very clearly for all 99 of my colleagues in the Senate. Nobody serving this chamber can even begin, can even begin to imagine what a completely scorched earth Senate would look like. Mitch McConnell said last week on what it could look like if the upper chamber, the Senate, and Democrats eliminate the filibuster. Quote, I want our colleagues to imagine a world where every single task, every one of them, requires a physical quorum. President Biden, before he became president, even in the, the beginning stages of his presidency, said that he respected the filibuster and he wanted it to stay there because he wants democracy and he wants to be able to get bills passed with both sides. But now that he's basically seeing the Republican blockade and seeing that Republicans are not voting for a single thing at all, we have not seen a single Republican vote so far yet for any Democratic bills, well, now President Biden is changing his mind. President Biden, who spent more than three decades in the Senate, last week signaled support for changing to a talking filibuster. He says, quote, you had to stand up and command the floor and you had to keep talking along. Biden said of past rules requiring someone to continuously hold the floor to keep a filibuster from being broken. Quote, once you stopped talking, you lost that and someone could move in and say, I move to the question of, You've got to work for the filibuster. It is almost getting to the point where democracy is having a hard time functioning, said President Joe Biden. If the Democrats are able to change this to a talking filibuster, it's basically getting rid of the filibuster. Because a Republican senator, for example, could go up there and delay a bill, but only for as long as he could physically stand up there talking, not leave to go get food, not leave to sleep, not leave at all. So basically what we're looking at is only a temporary minor delay. Right now, a filibuster without 60 votes is delayed forever. So basically, if you don't get 60 votes and you don't pass it through the reconciliation process, which you can only do a number of times and has a lot of other rules in it, that basically, if you're not up there talking and delaying the vote, uh, it's going to get passed. You don't really need 60 votes. You really only need a simple majority of 50 to 51 votes with a talking filibuster. So a talking filibuster would essentially get rid of the filibuster and would make it so that Democrats or even Republicans in the future could pass any bill, including future stimulus bills, with only a simple majority of 50 to 51 votes. Many people are pending and actually getting direct deposits for their $1,400 stimulus checks today. A lot of people are pending for the 24th as well as the 26th. We will likely see tens of millions of Americans get additional stimulus check deposits and even $1,400 paper checks going out this week. Let me and let our viewers know, our extended family here, if you are pending for some time this week, what day you're pending for and what bank you're with, if you're with Social Security, SSDI, don't put your bank account information or anything like that. Please be very careful. There's a lot of scams going on right now on the phone over um, tax refunds and stimulus checks, as well as in the comments of this channel. If anybody says contact me on WhatsApp, even if it says me, it's just an imposter imp impersonating me. It's happening every single day. I block them as soon as I see them. But if you see me in the comments without a check mark by my name, asking you to contact them on WhatsApp or for Bitcoin. It's a scam. It's an imposter. There's people doing this through the mail and on the phone. And basically, there's a lot of scams going on right now. So please be very careful. Don't give your personal information to anybody over the phone. The IRS will not call you over stimulus checks at all. So I'll keep you up to date on all these different stimulus items. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on updates. On the third stimulus check, the fourth stimulus round coming up, and more. I'll keep you up to date on everything. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check videos next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have had dozens of students replace their nine to five income selling products on Amazon, and I teach them how to do that. And me and my wife sell products on Amazon as well. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video.